world's largest and most powerful space telescope. One of the greatest scientific missions of modern times has taken a giant leap with the launch at lunchtime of the James Webb Space Telescope. For many years, cosmologists worldwide have relied on seemingly accurate models based on mathematical observations and theories to determine intricate details about the universe. But what happens when new discoveries threaten the very fundamental knowledge and basis of the universe as we know it? Relying on the James Webb Telescope, cosmologists developed a new method to calculate the universe's age. This new approach has caused more confusion, making scientists panic. Is it possible that our understanding of the cosmos has been wrong all this while? Join us to explore how the James Webb Telescope deep field image with Flamingo has shattered our physics. Confusion in cosmology. In recent years, cosmology is getting experts confused. There appears to be inaccuracy in the different methods of measuring the universe's age. The two methods of calculating the universe's age have yielded results that vary and do not align with recent discoveries, and cosmologists have not yet learned. The difference in these ages from these methods is known as the Hubble tension, or the S8 tension. To resolve the Hubble constant, cosmologists decided to explore a different method of calculating the universe's age with the use of the James Webb Telescope. But rather than resolving this dilemma, the James Webb Telescope, with its recent images, has worsened the crisis even more, putting scientists and everyone involved in doubts about everything they ever believed to be true about the universe. The new method used by this telescope to calculate the age of the universe is called the Impossible Early Galaxy Observation. One of the world's most powerful supercomputers was partnered with the James Webb Telescope to process information from the cosmos, a simulation that lasted over 50 million hours of computer time distributed across the 30,000 supercomputer processors at Durham University in the UK. This computer, dubbed Flamingo, an acronym for Full Hydra Large Scale Structure Simulations with all sky mapping for the interpretation of next generation observations, stands out not only for its immense size and high resolution, but also for its comprehensive approach. Previous supercomputer simulations used to compare observations of the universe have focused on dark matter. This is because dark matter was believed to be a key component of the structure of the cosmos. Now, Astronomers believe that the effect of ordinary matter, which makes up 16% of all matter of the universe, as well as neutrinos and tiny particles, must also be taken into account to determine how the universe evolved. Distinct from previous simulations, the flamingo goes beyond gravity alone. It shows that ordinary bionic matter, despite comprising only a fifth of the total mass, significantly influences how cosmic matter is distributed at smaller scales. Factors such as galactic winds propelled by supermassive black holes and supernova explosions can impede galaxy growth. This new calculation method determines the universe's age to be 26.7 billion years old, which varies from the age obtained by the previous methods. Despite the advancements made by using this technology, such as the accurate depiction of the formation of celestial bodies Flamingo still fell short of explaining the observed weak clumping of matter in the universe presently. In other words, it couldn't resolve the main purpose it was created for, to help solve the S8 tension. Or could it be right? Could it possibly mean that our standard model of cosmology is wrong and we haven't known all this while? The simulation also contradicts the observations of the James Webb Space Telescope and other observatories about the distribution of matter in the universe. It tells us that galaxies are 7% more closely clustered than they are. The new simulation is more detailed and takes into account the role of supermassive black holes, but that still isn't right. It's still 5% more clumpy. This discovery has left scientists to wonder, which of these calculations is correct? Have the older methods relied on always been wrong? Or is there a mistake with the new method? This, combined with the Hubble tension, is the crisis in cosmology. But to fully understand how big the crisis is, we would have to look deeper into the meaning of the terminologies involved. 
What exactly is the Hubble constant? Ever since the famous Big Bang 13.82 billion years ago, the universe has been getting bigger and bigger. The Hubble constant is the unit of measurement of this expansion. It has been shown that as the expansion of the universe increases, the rate at which it expands increases. Interestingly, according to NASA, if the expansion begins to slow down, it implies that something in the universe is slowing it down, perhaps dark matter. If this expansion speeds up, it also results from this thing. This thing is said to be dark matter. While the phenomenon was once understood to be that the galaxies are moving away from each other, modern-day astronomers understand that what is being observed is the expansion of the universe. No matter where you may be in the cosmos, you would see the same phenomenon play out at the same speed. How do scientists determine the rate of this expansion and the universe's age? The first method is a more direct method, which involves the study of cosmic microwave background radiation, CMBR. The CMBR is the leftover electromagnetic radiation from the Big Bang that permeates all of space. From a time soon after the Big Bang, cosmologists picked an imprint of the early universe and compared that to the present model to predict the universe's age. Using this calculation method, the Hubble constant was estimated to be 67.4 kilometers per second per megaparsec, and the universe's age to be about 13.8 billion years. The second method is a more direct method than the first. It involves the use of variable start like Cepheid. The variability of these stars can help determine the distance of nearby galaxies, which can be used to measure the distances to galaxies further away. This can be used to form a type of distance ladder. For galaxies that are too far away, cosmologists use type 1a supernovas. To get a distance, researchers compare the brightness of the supernovas to the brightness observed by the telescope. Using this method, the value for the Hubble constant was determined to be 73.2, with a positive or negative 1.3 kilometers per second per megaparsec, and the universe's age was determined to be 14.5 billion years old. Are the James Webb Telescope and the Flamingo well-equipped for this exploration? The Flamingo is no ordinary supercomputer. To ensure that this computer's simulations are realistic enough for studies of large-scale structure, the subgrid prescriptions for stellar and AGN feedback are read to the observed low redshift galaxy stellar mass function and cluster gas fractions. The readings are taken using machine learning separately for each of Flamingo's three resolutions. The readings account for several anticipated and random errors in the observed stellar masses. The two most demanding simulations have box sizes of 1.0 and 2.8 gigaparsecs on a side and baryonic particle masses of 100 million and 1 billion, respectively. For the latter resolution, the suite includes 12 model variations in a 1 gigaparsec box. There are eight variations in fixed cosmology, including shifts in the stellar mass function, the cluster gas fractions we calibrate, and two alternative implementations of AGN feedback. The remaining four variations use the unmodified calibration data, but different cosmologies, including neutrino masses. To make Flamingo supercomputer simulation successful, the researcher of this project developed a new code base called SWIFT, specifically for it. This new code distributes computational work over thousands of CPUs. This can be as many as 65,000 CPUs or the power of 17,000 home PCs. Although the JWST is often described as a replacement for Hubble, its capabilities differ slightly from the iconic telescope that came before it. While the Hubble Space Telescope looks mostly at the visual and ultraviolet parts of the electromagnetic spectrum, the JWST looks at longer wavelengths in the infrared. The telescope has many scientific goals and capabilities. It can examine nearby exoplanets, study the earliest stars, observe supermassive black holes, and look for signs of cold, dark matter. It is used to study young galaxies, answering questions of how these galaxies assemble and move through clouds of dust to watch stars being formed. Despite looking so far away, it also looks much closer to home, studying objects within our solar system such as Mars, 
the gas giants, Pluto, and even some asteroids and comets flying around. JWST is designed differently from Hubble. With 18 hexagonal mirrors arranged in a honeycomb shape 6.5 meters across, compared to Hubble's spherical 2.4 meter diameter primary mirror. This means the James Webb Space Telescope has a surface area 6.25 times larger than the Hubble Space Telescope to allow it to collect more light. It has upgraded cameras and is protected by a 22 by 12 meters wide sun shield. The JWST is designed to go even further back to the edge of the observable universe, looking back in time. Light from objects in this distant part of the universe, like the earliest galaxies, is highly redshifted, which means we need infrared telescopes to observe them. The JSWT can see far enough to see what the universe looked like around 100 to 250 million years after the Big Bang, when the first stars and galaxies started to form. Unlike ground-based telescopes that face challenges with Earth's atmosphere, which is opaque to many infrared bands, Webb can observe without interference. It can also study objects in the solar system from various angles, including planets, satellites, and celestial bodies beyond Mars's orbit. Webb's sensitivity allows it to observe known Kuiper Belt objects and respond quickly to unexpected events like supernovae and gamma-ray bursts within 48 hours. These two powerful tools combined put cosmologists in a comfortable position to study what is left to be known in the universe. These tools seem more than capable of helping scientists resolve the crisis of cosmology. How old is the universe? While it's not yet verified which of these calculations is correct, some very interesting theories and observations on the ground create hope for the future of cosmology. It's difficult to say for certain the age of the universe based on any of these calculations, but until the older methods of calculating the age of the universe have been proven wrong, it is safe to maintain the already existing understanding we have of the universe. So although the new calculation estimates the universe to be 26.7 billion years old, the closest to the correct answer to the universe's age remains that the universe is 13.8 billion years old. But that's not the end. One thing is a fact, and that is that scientists will keep working to unravel the mystery of the age of the universe. What do you think? Is the present model for calculating the universe's age correct? Or is more work still to be done? Thank you for watching. While you are still here, click the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.